Patrick, guess what came in the mail today? The what? This. Stick it in! No. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the MK Production Podcast, a very belated episode of the MK Production Podcast. I'm joined here by my co-host, Kristen, aka Miss Flamingo. Say hello, folks. Hello, Kristen. Hello, everyone. I'm also joined by my dog, Molly. Want to say hello, hello Molly. 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 But we are, more importantly, we are here tonight with a special guest, a guest that we haven't had in almost two years. I think the last episode we had him on was, we talked about Hamilton? No, video games. We did no. the video game podcast. Yeah, we did video games yeah. with... He's um, my main man when it comes... Yeah, he's the main man that I go to talk about video games with, and he knows the stuff. Sometimes he knows it better than me, because I'm still a novice. But it's our homie, AJ, from AJ Reacts. Welcome back to the show, AJ. What's going on, guys? Thank you for having me back. I'm excited. No I problem, feel like we need man. to give you a giant hug, because it's been, like, Forever. way too yes. long. Yes, so, hugs over the airwaves right uh, now. Hugs, yay. hugs, air hugs. Yes. AJ, okay. So, AJ, well, AJ, what have you been up to since the last time you've been on here? Like, what have you been doing content-wise? You know, um, I have taken a couple breaks. Um, I've left, come back, did some reviews on my Instagram. I've been kind of really heavy on uh, reviews on my Instagram. So go check that out if you haven't already. Um mm-hmm. This year, I have been taking some time out to um, not purchase any movies, um, out of pocket anyway. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of difficult for me because I am a collector. I love collecting Blu-rays, 4Ks, uh, physical media of all sorts. So um, at the beginning of the year, I said, you know what? I'm going to slow down. I spent way too much money on movies last year so let me take a step back and you know if i get a gift card cool i can get something um uh, if it's a gift i can get something but um you know not nothing out of pocket so i've been doing pretty good with that um my anniversary was um oh yeah um me and my wife celebrated our anniversary in june at the end of june thank you thank you um and she got me some things so i I was able to uh, acquire a few pickups um but yeah that's that's really what's been going on this year i've been seeing some good movies some movies that were so so and today we're talking about something that i saw that was amazing so Mm -hmm. i'm excited to get into that Yes, yeah, no, no pun intended. Pun intended. <laughs> it was uh, incredible, fantastic, spectacular. Some yeah. might say, spectacular, spectacular. <laughs> I, I, I will second. say that took me a minute to register in my head. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? That's like, like oh. the processing, uh, the word processor going through. Yeah, the old dialogue <laughs> tone. It took me a little, like, I'm expecting, but oh, okay, mm-hmm. Chris. But yes, See AJ, what I did there? AJ's links will be in the description below. Make sure you go check them out awesome content but Kristen what did you want to say uh while you talk video games with uh Mr. AJ reacts I had a conversation with him about the Jonas Brothers so uh I know what your favorite one of your favorite songs off of the new Jonas Brothers album Jonas Brothers Jonas Brothers the album but I just want to give a shout out to that AJ what has been your favorite Jonas Brothers song sorry Mac um Jonas Brothers. Um, yeah, they just dropped their new album not too long ago. Um, entitled guy. the album, mm-hmm. um, which is an interesting title. Um, for an album, but Wait. you know, Wait, what it's called the album. It's called the, the album. album. Yes, yes. And um, I really enjoyed this album, though. Um, to be honest, there was a lot of tracks on here that I'm really digging. Um, I love Americana. Americana's good. Uh, Wings, I really dig. Uh, Waffle House, Montana Sky, Miracle. Um, those are just to name a few. That Walls are, feels like I'm going to church. That's Walls like one of my favorite. Walls is like a life changing experience. <laughs> just go watch their SNL performance. What they did earlier this year, it yes. changed me. I was like, I'm at church with the Jonas Brothers and John <laughs> Belly on. Nobody can take that away from me. John so, is such an underrated artist, but uh, I digress. Yeah. Um, um, but shout out to that. 
Yes, I, I actually watched a movie today called Joyride, and they <gasps> make a <laughs> joke. <laughs> Did you like it? I did. I actually really liked it. And they made a joke about the Jonas Brothers in I know in that which movie. joke you're talking about. <laughs> and I was uh I was I it came it, it uh took me off guard a little bit. Let's say that. It took me off guard a little bit, but it, it was funny. It was a funny movie. Yeah. Um shout but, out to um, Joyride and Ashley Park. Yes, yes. Shout out to them, the crew. That's, yes. That movie was great. My favorite Jonas Brothers song is uh Year Three Thousand. That is a fantastic song. Classic. 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 But before we get into our topic, which, by the way, we're going to be talking about across Spider-Verse, we should probably explain why we haven't uh, recorded a new episode. And it's about me, and we'll keep it quick. So, folks, if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you may know that I've been down and out for a minute. And uh, short story, I sprained my ankle really bad. How it happened? On my way to work, I fell off the bus, stepped on new shoes, ankle went in and i've been in a boot for about two weeks now but i'm doing okay the bump's going down but there's still some blood that needs to get drained but that's why we haven't been going i haven't been to the theaters but at the time this recording i will be going to the theater on monday the 24th to go see oppenheimer and i will attempt to check the theaters by myself we'll get there don't worry i hope so but and you're going on a monday to see the movie so i monday think you'll be okay at, monday at 10 35 in the morning or at night yeah. Morning, the hell? That's a three-hour oh, movie. God. I was about to say, like, yo, if you're seeing that, like, like, no. oh, man. you're not getting out of there until you're not getting home till four a.m. Nah. Yeah, honestly, you might be I will, going I will, to the theater in your jammies. I will yeah. say, I did go see Level? um the Batman at like seven o'clock, and I had to get home to like eleven, and I had to work the next day. No oh, man. Oh yeah, I remember that when we did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the second time I saw it, and I fell asleep. <laughs> I was like, luckily I watched the movie, but I wanted to see it again. And I fell asleep. But anyways, besides that, that's why we haven't been recording. But we're, we're back to a regular consistent schedule, sort of, before we go on vacation. But without further ado, let's get right into the one news topic that we have because why the hell not? What's going on in the world? But yeah, let's get right into the news. This is CNN, a network of Turner Broadcasting System. Okay, so there's only one news thing, and um, to, tell, to be honest with all the folks listening. Since this big event's going on, there probably won't be a lot of news segments in the future of the shows until it's over, but we figured we'd just get it out of the way now because this is happening at the time of recording, but we got to talk about it, guys. The Wonka trailer came out. <laughs> man, that, that Wonka trailer. Did you guys watch the Wonka trailer? You're the funny little man who's been following me. I will have you know that I am a perfectly respectable size for an Oompa Loompa. An Oompa what now? Allow me to refresh your memory. Oh, I don't think I want to hear that. Too late. I've started dancing now. Once we've started, we can't stop. Yeah? You Grant owes a oompa oompa, 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 oompa What'd you guys think? Are you going to go see Wonka? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go see it. I mean, it's not like I, I'm opposed to seeing it. It looks like family fun. I mean, like, it, it seems like a... Uh, christmas time fun time um i just but... don't believe uh timothy chalamet as gene wilder i'm I, sorry i get that i get that and I, I understand that um i didn't grow up watching uh willy wonka in the chocolate factory in fact i've only seen half of it really so oh, interesting yeah and i know a lot of people that grew up with it and they're not happy about this trailer that much (laughs) um, because because they just don't feel the charm of gene wilder and i get it um i think i might have a little bit of a different perspective though since i i didn't grow up with um the you know the ip so what i saw of the movie the original was fine it didn't impress me that much i feel like if i watched it as a kid i would love it um but I don't know this this new Wonka. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. That's one thing I will say. <laughs> That's uh, what a lot of really, people said too. We don't really need an origin story for Willy Wonka, but you know the way things are going in Hollywood and how stories are written and what content we're getting. I'm not surprised that we're getting this. I don't know. It seems like a movie that you know you could take your family to on Christmas and or around Christmas and have a good time. I don't know. I can't wait for the end of Wonka where um the Ubula comes up and to Wonka is like, let me tell you about the Wonka initiative and just starts <laughs> the whole cinematic universe for it. But I think with Wonka, 
my thing is that I'm noticing is that it, it comes back to what we talked about multiple times because Kristen has been like a big proponent of this is that Timothy Chalamet, like they're trying to push him as like the new big young actor. But the thing with him is that like not a lot of people know him unless you're like, you know, like you watch Dune or you keep up with films and entertainment stuff like us. Like we know who Timothy Chalamet or is. Or you watch Call Me By Your Name with the cannibalist, so-called cannibalist ha- Harmy Ammer and you fell in love with the young Timothy Chalamet and the Peaches. See, I didn't... Mm, yeah. Peaches, Peaches, Peaches. <laughs> um, but it's, it's the point of like, if you're not going to go with Timothy Chalamet, he's going, like we said, Leo and Mario DiCaprio around. No super movies, no all that. And mm-hmm. he picks these roles and gets these roles, but it's like, you're always going to be seen as like, you have to like bring your A game up. There's nothing about Timothy Chalamet to me that's like, I want to go to the theaters to see him. Like he's not a main star yet. And then, you know, he's got Dune Part 2. That's exciting. But besides that, he's doing Wonka and then he's going to be Bob Dylan. Like there's not really a role that I can oh, distinguish with him. Bob Dylan. Yeah, there's not mm-hmm. even a role I can distinguish him with that, and I think that's a problem that he needs to like think about ways to make himself more marketable as like a leading man. Because with Wonka, it's probably going to be people who grew up with both the Gene Wilder Wonka and then the Johnny Depp mm-hmm. Wonka. So you're going to mm-hmm. see if those two mesh. Because let's face it, anyone co- coming after Gene Wilder as Wonka, it was going to be a tough struggle. Because even Johnny Depp, I liked his Wonka, but you know, there it was a, it was a little wacky. It was more it was just different. Like, yeah, it was, it was Tim Burton. Yeah, Tim Burton dies. So we'll we'll see what he does. Timothy does because I'm excited. I just want to see you grant it to Lupa. But the part in the trailer was like, "It's too late. I'm already dancing." Did I think that's such a good casting for yeah. Lupa, though. <laughs> I don't know why. I just saw it. I said that feels natural. <laughs> Funny, and like he was in um he was in um Dungeons and Dragons and he was hilarious in that and I love it. Yeah. I still have to see that. It's good. Oh, uh, you should. It's, it's, the, it's a good movie. One of my, my favorite movies of the year. It kind of surprised me. Dylan wants to see it. Yeah, you I, guys should I, check that out. I had no idea about D and D. Um, oh, I played a little bit this year after that movie, but it was fun. My mom watched it with it, and we around the house we just go, "Oh, Jonathan." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I I had never you know played Dungeons and Dragons or knew anything about it before I saw the movie, and um, the only thing I knew about Dungeons and Dragons is. Um, what they do on Stranger Things. So uh, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's, I was gonna say it. my so, my first experience with Dungeons and Dragon was a '80s movie with Tom Hanks called Mazes and Monsters. When he mm-hmm. plays um, Dungeons and Dragons, he starts to see like all this occultist stuff, and he was gonna jump off the World Trade Center, and he was like, oh, I, he's, he's, he's like, dark. yeah, because he sees all these like creatures from the game, and so he's like, he's like, what are you doing? So I'm going to join the Great Hall. He's like, you can't. It's a trap. He's like. I got spells like I'm the game master. I'm a dungeon master, and I have control of this game. He starts crying, and he gets um, help down. It's wacky, but um, let let's go into the main topic, guys. There is three months after the start of the writers' strike, which we covered in the show just mm-hmm. this past week. The SAG, the Actors Guild, they declared a strike too, and it's a strike pretty much just the I. Don't know a lot about it. I've been trying to read it. I'm a little confused, but I'll let Christian explain what exactly is going on. So, Christian, what is this SAG strike? Like, what is it throwing? What is going on with them and why they're striking? And how come this has happened for the first time since in like 60 years? Okay, so there's a lot going on with the WGA, uh, WGA and the SGA. So, the SGA, I mean, not, yeah, did I say that right? Yeah. No, I did not. No, SAG. Uh, the SAG, I should just say it's SAG, and no, it's not calling the SAG, but uh, SAG is basically going after the same rights as what writers are going after right now, which is better arrangements, because now streaming has taken over effects, rights are being taken away, and there's more to the story to that. Um, so right now, it's mostly fa- affecting the actors in the major studios so that being said um a lot of actors right now have stopped their projects because of the strike so nothing can be filmed and they're outside the picket line on the picket lines going over to places like netflix and nbc anywhere like major strikes have been happening in atlanta new york and la so 
a lot of people have been marching, and Fran Drescher is the president of SAG. And I'm just gonna say a little something that she had said. Uh, we stand in solidarity with the uh, unprecedented unity, our union and our sister unions, and the unions around uh, around the world standing by us as we as well as other labor unions, because at some point the jig is up. You cannot keep being dwindled and marginalized, disrespected and dishonored. The entire business model has been changed by streaming, digital, and AI. This is a moment in history uh, that is a moment of truth. If we, do, if we don't stand tall right now, we are all going to be in trouble. We are going to be in jeopardy of being replaced by machines and big business who cares more about Wall Street than your family. This is what she said last week in the big press conference announcing the strike. So uh, it's a very serious moment knowing that streaming digital is being affected. But one of the major things is the AI. So AI would be basically one of the uh, proponents is that if a background doctor wanted to come into work, background doctors are a great way for many people to get started in the business. But with something like a let's say like a Netflix, they need a extra for, let's say a stranger things. A actor could come into the, for a day, their body could be scanned. They could only be paid probably like $200, but that going forward, Netflix would own their likeness. That way they could be used for other projects, not for just say like a stranger things. So that's kind of scary because they don't know, the actors don't know what, the consent would be to use themselves for if this were to happen there's a lot of like scariness going on with this ai because uh ai is full force and it's funny because there's an article right now that's going around and it's like um i think it was james cameron warning everybody he's like i warned you guys back in the 80s that this was gonna happen and here we are now something like the ai wanting to take over big hollywood <laughs> excuse me i have a lot to explain and then also what's being said about streaming is that residuals are very low so uh it's different in the way of terms of how streaming is being affected you know we have access to friends we have access to parks and rec we have all these ways of people re-watching shows it's not just like a more of a syndication people want to get paid for those reruns there those airings but the thing is, they don't get paid. Another thing is, um, if you want to go back real far, back in the day, there was a TikTok that was posted of, uh, do you guys remember Devin Werkheiser from Netsy Classified? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said that he never got paid from working on Netsy Classified when reruns were airing. So that's what's like an example of what these actors are fighting for to get um, bigger residuals and monies to their account so that they can afford to pay for their home, their families to have a meal because right now it's not looking good for anybody to afford anything. I mean, look at the crisis right now. I mean, like Wall Street is changing, monies are changing, everything is changing. And right now to be an actor, it, it doesn't pay the bills. So right now, a lot of big actors, including a star who was on, um, which we'll call it orange is the new black had to get a second job because she could not afford to pay her bills. And she was one of like the supporting actresses and orange is the new black was also one of the, um, first streaming shows. So I might be a little all over the place right now with this guys, but right now your favorite projects such as euphoria, stranger things, um, anything, that is big right now that you love it's on hold including wicked that movie that's going to come out next year uh we just had mission impossible dead reckoning part one come out part two can't even continue filming because uh the strike so everything that you love right now as i said yes including the big marvel projects have been put on hold so mm -hmm. we are going to be expecting a lot of release dates being changed because these big companies are not looking to make adjustments as of right now.
And that I, was a lot, and I, I apologize if I was no, all over the no, place. No, no that's you're good. Fine. That's good. That's a good little. Um, also, I want to add the uh, the stupid <laughs> um, quote Bob Iger said. Um, yes, please include the wonderful Bob Iger. I feel like most people loved before he stepped down, and then we had listen, him return, and now he's just a piece of scum that I just like. Listen, wanted, I just disrespect I, now with with Bob Iger. <sighs> He, how do I say this? I liked him because he was just to the bottom line. When he came back, I was like, okay, good. We can get maybe get some control back in Disney. Um, but um, I just I don't know. But the comment he made, uh, this is on. Keep in mind, he made this comment on a billionaire's retreat. Um, so he made this on the Squawk Talk. He said, "It's very disturbing to me. We've talked about disruptive forces on the business and all the changes we're facing. The coverage from COVID, which is ongoing, is not completely back." This is the worst time in this is the worst time in the world to add that disruption. I understand any labor organization's desire to work on behalf of its members to get the most compensation and be compensated fairly based on the value that they deliver. We managed as an industry to negotiate a very good deal with the directors guild that reflects the value that the directors contribute to this great business. Excuse me. We want to do the same thing with the writers, and we'd like to do the same thing with the actors. There's a lot of ex- expectation that they have that is just not realistic, and they are adding to the set of the challenges that this business is, business is already facing that is, quite frankly, very disruptive. So yeah, pretty much I'm saying like, hey, stop being selfish. You guys are being realistic. Let's just come back and make some movies. We're try, trying to recover from COVID. So, you know. Look, dude. Um, look, look. Bobby, come on now. Uh, pay Bobby. these people what they deserve. Mm-hmm. That's all you got to do. It's not that hard. You don't have to have three, four different bonuses a year. Cut that down and pay these people what they deserve. They're basically their work is how you're able to live the way you are. Mm-hmm. So pay these people the what they deserve, and there wouldn't be any problems. Exactly. Like, like it the whole thing with AI, yes, it is very scary. I agree with you. Because doing that type of thing, are are there going to be any real actors anymore? If people start agreeing it's to this? It's very scary that what actors can consent to. And I was thinking about this. This, the idea of AI has been going on for, years. for a while. Because <laughs> you know how holograms are a thing and you can go to like a concert and see like, a Whitney Houston and a Michael Jackson. Yeah. They don't have their consent anymore to play beyond because they're no longer here. So yeah. imagine them, if they were alive now seeing this AI, they would be like, what the heck? I wouldn't, would I want to consent to this? I, so, so it's been gone for a while, I we, feel like. We kind of got that with um, The Flash. Um, with the at the end of the the film, um, spoiler. Oh, I didn't see the Flash. Come on! I am so I mean, sorry about that. I chose not to. No, I would. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I chose not to see the Flash, but I, I, I will take that spoiler. I don't mind. I heard about that. I, I know the about the other spoiler. Spoiler. I also spoiled that to Max. So you're all good, AJ. <laughs> uh, I'm very sorry about that, Mac. Uh... <laughs> Mac. It's, just, it's it's Ezra Miller. You're gonna be okay. Give a shit. I was waiting for watching for Michael Key, but yeah, go on, AJ. <laughs> Flash. <laughs> um, well, I feel bad now. <laughs> it's okay. It, it's it's okay. fine. I was gonna watch it anyway, but at this point, it's just whatever. It's all digital. I'll just print it. It's all digital now. That's and that's another thing that's wild. Uh, these movies and their theatrical runs are, are so short. getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And you know these digital releases aren't making even close to the as much money as it will make. No, um, you know, in in the actual theater. So that's another thing that's that's hurting these actors. Mm-hmm. Digital so I, and streaming and all that. Mm-hmm. I just also want to point out that uh, something that says uh, a tweet from Robert Reach on uh, Twitter. It says, we can't afford to pay writers and actors, in quotes. Meanwhile, the studio CEO pays is throughout the roof. Netflix mm-hmm. CEO makes $51 million between and $50 million. Netstar mm-hmm. CEO, $39 million. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO, $39 million. Comcast CV- CEO, $32 million. Paramount CEO, $32 million. Walt Disney CEO, $24 million. AMC 
AMC, 24 million. Fox mm -hmm. Corporation CEO, 22 million. Oh, Meanwhile, yeah. um, I was having a discussion with the Swift family and people asked me, why is this strike necessary? And I said, it's necessary for people like who want to get started in the industry and other actors who aren't like a Dwayne Johnson who's getting paid $50 million to do a Christmas movie on Amazon. There's a difference. You know, that background actor on the Amazon project is probably going to only make like $200 just for showing up for a day. So that's yeah. why it's different for something like a big star versus like a normal person, like an everyday average Joe trying to make a living and doesn't want to work the corporate job or working at a, let's say, uh, being a teacher or working on some other normal job, but you know, for for an actor, it's normal to, to do background work. So they need a higher pay. So this is what one of the reasons why they're going on strike. Yeah. Because the nothing has been updated since like the '60s and anything like that. So it, this is all necessary to happen. And I want to point out there could be a strike going on Broadway. I am not Shit. joking. Yeah, we about to have not, well. It's what we already seen besides the um the delays in productions we're already seeing this from the tv front because it was just announced recently that um miss marvel will air on abc this fall because they don't have any a lot of the tv shows can't be released yet because of the strike so mm -hmm. they're they're airing um captain marvel but i think they're airing another streaming show on oh yeah i think yellowstone is gonna be yeah yellowstone is gonna be on cbs starting this fall and they're gonna re basically air all four seasons of what or like what has been going up to. Yeah, so they, they they need something to put on air. Is Yellowstone not on regular television? No, it's on Paramount Plus. It's it's on it's on no, it's not. Um it's on... Yellowstone is on Peacock, but if or you want to if if you don't have Peacock, you can watch it on cable on Par yeah, the Paramount it's Network. On the Paramount Network. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I was wondering. But they're this. put. They're putting it on local. Local television. Local television. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But I feel like nowadays everybody gets cable. That's true. <laughs> if it's so, either cable or just streaming or antenna TV too. Yeah. yeah. But so, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with this. Like like I mentioned, we're, we're not going to cover any news in the coming episodes until the strike's over because there's nothing really going to be to talk about. I mean, we may do like an update, but as of now, the writer's strike has been going on for three months and the actor just started. So we'll see because we already saw like big ripple effect is that the premiere of Oppenheimer, the cast walked out. And yeah. there was supposed to be a press event and a fan event for Barbie in New York. That was canceled. Yeah. The Oppenheimer premiere on, that was supposed to have money canceled so you know you know what i heard i heard that part of their contracts to be part of the guild um requires them not to attend any of these events or um premieres or anything like that so i think they were contra con contractually ob obligated not to be there yeah so they mm -hmm. they so when the oppenheimer movie was about to start people like robert down jr emily blunt matt damon all walked out because they wanted to stand in solidarity with their fellow actors. And I would give them, I should say, we're not giving the major actors a lot of respect. Yes, they are going to be the voices for all the young actors and current actors that are really struggling, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, it's great to see that they are really are helping. I know it's, it's been great to see what, how a lot of the stars have been treating it online. A lot of stars mm -hmm. have been going out on the streets making awareness if you saw people like hillary duff she uh got to sing what dreams are made of while you know picketing with the how i met your father cast uh Did today she? yeah wow. as of today I, that happened today this happened a few days ago a few um, days ago. okay okay the iCarly cast, the reboot cast, got together outside one of the studios and sang the theme song of the iCarly theme song. Um, so people are coming together, which is nice. They are having reunions in a way, but, uh, <laughs> but <the laughs> maybe not exactly how they want. Yeah. Uh, in, in ways that you know are spreading awareness and making a huge, huge difference. So uh, that and. Um uh comic con has taken a really huge hit because yes. a lot of stuff mm -hmm. can, like at this point comic con is just gonna be video games and i'm kind of sad because uh this comic con was gonna be our first look at the new car guys versus vs kong that's coming out next year but we gotta keep waiting that may not even come out might next it, year yep, might they not might even have be to delay year. it mm -hmm. 
And uh, I would like to say that uh, with this this Comic Con, uh, actors are not allowed to attend those promotional events because it is promoting whatever project it is, you know, so yeah. they cannot attend that. Um, wow. So, however, does this affect like our community it does affect like people like mac and i and aj since we all are film fanatics we are film geeks we are film nerds we are film critics we are not quote-unquote influencers we are not union people so this is affecting us in a way like when we go to the movies it's like yes uh things are going to be changing in the way of maybe a release date but uh that being said it is not affecting what mac and i do we are not scabbing. We are not doing anything. Uh, Mac and I have not taken any uh, promotional things. And therefore, we are standing in solidarity with mm -hmm. the actors and the writers. So uh, mm -hmm. going forward, uh, Mac and I had this discussion. Is that okay if I discuss this now, Mac? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we are going to be re still reviewing Oppenheimer. We are still going to review Barbie. However there will be a change in the content. So we're gonna look back at older films. We mm -hmm. may review a newer film, but for now to uh, not really give the big boss the big bucks we are, and you know, we are we can talk about the films. We just wanna stand in solidarity with everybody. And uh, we're just gonna be careful about what we review and what we wanna talk about. So uh, mm -hmm. we're, 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 yeah, we're gonna just change up the content a little bit. We are still going to be reviewing movies. We are still going to have on guests. We are still going to have discussions about film. So, um, yeah, that's what we decided. Yeah. I hope that's okay yeah. with our audience, and uh, hope you guys tune in and stick around for that. So, uh, yeah. that's that that's the gist of it. But you know, like we recommend everyone just go out. You we don't want to be like you have to think this. You can go out, do the research yourself, and you come to your own conclusion. We own your own yeah. conclusion. But there are it... people who are stopping, you know, all content in general from reviewing films. Uh, mm -hmm. you, they don't, these people don't have to do that, but it's nice that they're mm -hmm. they are doing it. But Mac and I are quote unquote also film hosts and film journalists. That's not stop. What is it, what it's doing is not affecting us in a way. So the WJA made a whole guideline that says. This part, since we are not in this part of the industry, we are not, we are not doing said things to. This is mostly for the actors. It's not so much for us. So, mm -hmm. yeah. but we and are I'm standing reviewing, and supporting. And I'm reviewing the kissing booth, so I'm okay. But let us know yeah. in the comments below. Uh, what do you think about the strike? What are your opinions on it? And uh, what do you think is going to happen with it? Uh, leave your comments below. But one more piece of news. Let's let's end it on a lighter note. Um, before we get into like oh, we've been talking for a while. Yeah, about this. The, but I just want to mention, guys, are you excited for the new Twisted Metal series? She had dumped like a truck, truck, truck. That's like, what, what, what? All night long. Let me see that thong. Like it when the beat go. Da -da -da -da. Baby, let your booty go. Da -da -da -da. Girl, I know you want to show. Da -da -da -da. The thong, the thong, thong, thong. Do you love this silver hair, God? Huh? Hey, don't lie to me. Yeah, man. I listened to Unleash the Dragon so many times the disc broke. I'm not a liar. But you said you were coming to my show. And then you shot at me. There's a misunderstanding. I've been getting shot at ever since I can remember. It's forced habit, I guess. Uh, sounds like you have trust issues. Yeah, you're not wrong. Sure. <laughs> yeah, Neff Campbell's in that, right? Neff Campbell. Oh, but for the folks at home, if you don't know, Peacock will be releasing the new Twisted Metal series coming out July 27th featuring Anthony Mackie. It's based on the play popular uh, car combat game that is exclusive to PlayStation where you play as dope characters, you try to murder each other in cars, you, you win Twisted Metal, like Twisted Metal. And the mascot of that is Sweet Tooth, which is the clown that's burning. And uh, yeah, I I'm excited for it because it looks interesting. I mean, we got to do this that trailer when Anthony Mackie and Sweet Tooth, voiced by Will Arnett, and played by Zabo Samoa Joe. It's like, let me see that thong. The thong's like, dong, 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 dong. So, yeah. Do you know what? Do you remember the last time I really heard the thong song? In what? Okay. This is not related to Twisted Metal, but uh, do you all remember Lip Sync Battle? Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember when Josh Peck went on and he did that song. He lip sank that song. And I was like, this boy from Drake and Josh, 
<laughs> singing the thong song on cable television. <laughs> And now he's going to be an Oppenheimer like seven years later. What mm-hmm. has it? This, this, this hey, is not Roger, what I imagine. What is, what is happening? <laughs> Roger, Roger's an Oppenheimer. He is. He is. Christopher Nolan watched uh, Roger Rules and said, Yes, that's my man. <laughs> that's, all, that's so awesome. The, the best that be kid movie, by the way. But yeah. I wish Josh Peck would promote an Oppenheimer right now. I know he can't because of the strike, yeah. but I just wish. I would have seen his excitement knowing he got to be an Oppenheimer and he's in the trailer. Yeah, that's that's wild. But oh. yeah, twist the metal. Can't wait for it. But um, we're done with the news. So uh, like I said, let me let me ask you this really quick. Is up? Twisted Metal going to be the entire season dropped at once or is it gonna be a weekly series? You know, oh, I haven't looked. I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to assume it's probably going to be weekly, but um, it the it's from um the people who made the Deadpool movie and Zombie Land. Mm-hmm. It's going to be okay. made by um who's it written by? It's the written. I don't see the writers on here. Oh, it's gonna. They're all dropping at once. Okay, it's going to be the entire like, season. That's yep. like what just happened with based on a true story. Hmm. Hmm. So and, be- and how many episodes there? Uh, ten episodes. Ten. Okay. They sound like they'll be like half hour. I don't see them being an hour. <laughs> an hour of twisted metal. <laughs> ten hours. An hour of the thong oh, song. T- every time hours. he wants to commit a crime. Oh my god! And the um, the, this is the premise for it. And in, in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, John Doe, who's actually a character from the games, a talkative milkman with amnesia, is given a mission to traverse the desolate world to deliver a cryptic package in order to stay alive. Alongside the assistance of quiet, a rash car thief, Doe faces a life-altering opportunity, but must confront ruthless marauders and a deadly and destructive vehicles to secure a chance at a better future. Great! It is a, every episode is half hours. By Sounds way. exhilarating. <laughs> You guys are excited for Twisted Metal? Um, I'm pumped. I'm just going to sit in my water. I'm, I'm going to put the pedal to the metal oh, on, next, oh, on that. Ne- next Thursday. <laughs> but um, I will ask this. AJ, you, yes. you we were talking about um, Horizon. Early. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And, and, of course, that's a PlayStation exclusive, yeah, PlayStation exclusive man. Recently, mm-hmm. we had the um, Uncharted movie. I mean, un- un- Uncharted. Um, <laughs> Uncharted? <laughs> Uncharted, yeah. Um, and they're making the God of War, uh, uh, what was it, movie or TV series they're doing, and then they're doing the Ghost of Tsushima. Um, what, other, yeah. what, what other PlayStation exclusive would you want to see turn into, like, a movie or TV show? Because I have an idea what I want. Uh, something that I've been thinking about for a while um, and it's not something that people are, you know, are, re- are really on anybody's radar. But yes, I grew up with Mario, but it wasn't something that it wasn't like my game. Like I, I, I had played it at other people's houses and things like that. But we got a Mario movie. Um, I feel like I know where you're going with this. I my game was Crash Bandicoot. Ooh. And I would actually be pretty intrigued to see a Crash Bandicoot style film. Mm-hmm. Well, the Crash Bandicoot film in the style of like the Mario movie. Okay. Because I enjoyed I enjoyed the Mario movie personally. But um yeah, I would I would be very intrigued to see what they would do with Crash Bandicoot. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. Pack up your stuff. I got a little surprise for you here. Check it out. What do you think about that? We got real time, 3D, lush organic environments. How's that make you feel, buddy? Feel a little like your days are numbered? I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You're hurting my elbow. Is that Italian? No, Bandicoot is an Australian name. My thing with it is like, how would you make it work? Because Crash doesn't talk. Would you crash a voice? Would but neither order? really does Mario. He says a few things, but you know, you would definitely have to have Crash talk. Um, but I think they can make it work. I personally, for me, I want a little Big Planet TV series or movie. I can see that. 
I, like, I would I would be down for that. For I sure. love little big fan. Kristen, I know you're a novice at gaming, but from the few oh, games absolutely from the few <laughs> games you've played, what game would you want to see turned into a movie or TV show since the Mario movie made a billion dollars and probably will open the floodgates for that? Hannah Montana, the game. Oh wait, that was already a movie. <laughs> For the DS. She actually did have a game, but it was for the DS. Hannah Montana, and the game, the movie. And PlayStation. I played them. That's right. I mean, I played Mean Girls in the DS. How would you feel Wait, if they what? rebooted There's a mean, mean Girls? Mean Girls game? I yeah. didn't. I yeah. didn't realize. You guys didn't know that? No. I didn't realize. Yeah, that, there, no. there, there is a game. Look up Mean Girls for the DS. There, It's a game. It's for know. DS only exclusive? I think so. Let me see. Mean Girls video game there was a mean girls on d uh, no put up video I'm, I'm typing a video game mean girls law it was a lost build of a game it was it didn't come out but oh, it was okay. it was at um it was released in europe ah i see but it was gonna come out on the ds it was like a puzzle game mm-hmm. so i played it Can we bootleg it i bootlegged it that's how i live <laughs> You could do a, a full game walkthrough on YouTube. It said the this is the um the thing. It says go up against p- plastics, jocks, art freaks, and mathletes as you work to play the clicks against each other and become the new high school prom queen. Unlock new mini games and environments. Wow. I just want to know what challenges that would have entailed. <laughs> um, you know what you had to do to maybe be beat Regina George. Mean Girls on the DS. Like I wonder like how that would have played. It's like that. Um, I wonder if anything involved the bus. Maybe that'd be like your central hub to travel from different click to click. No, I mean like and when you remember hit, no, what I mean was hit, hitting her oh. George. Uh, maybe that'd be like the ending of the game. That's like the secret Easter egg. The secret Easter Or like that's more of it then. I mean we can remaster Corey in the house for DS. But it cancels Kyle Massey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyle Massey is already canceled. You have to recast. We'll get his brother. Yeah. His brother's also canceled. Oh, is he, oh, shit, is oh, he yeah, really? I forgot, I forgot about what the fuck? Oh, yeah. man. Isn't he going to be in that new Zoe 101 movie? Well, to be fair, half that cast is canceled. <laughs> is it, are they? Okay, so, oh, I get to spill some tea about Zoe 101. Uh, Jamie Lynn, she is uh, something else I can't say on here because I don't want to be mean. She's a B-I-T-C-H. Oh. Yeah, go go look at the Britney stuff and um and what she did to poor, to poor, poor, poor Alexis Nichols. Yeah. Um, whatchamacallit? The kid who played uh the rich kid. Whatchamacallit? Logan? Logan, thank you. Uh-huh. He got charged uh, with being with a young girl. I think she was like 17 while he was caught with possession of like marijuana, I think it was. And he was Yeah, he over- got arrested oh, for that. He was with her Matthew like, Underwood, just, yes. He was just smoking with her or Or I think he was like in a relationship with her, I think. Too. They might as well just reboot Drake and Josh at this point, then. Oh, oh Drake! Oh, Drake is also canceled. <laughs> I know for oh. the same type of stuff. Really- yeah, I mean, Ma- uh, Michael Massey, I think, has some kids. Actually, oh, no, no lot, no, no lie. Oh no! There's, there's, there's some that's, stuff. Yeah, that's that's very unfortunate. Uh... And, I rem- and do you want to know something really bad? I remember seeing something where Kyle Massey was like, I think, hanging out with like one of the like, you remember like Alyssa Violet or something like that, or like the Logan Paul crew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like one of them was hanging, one of them was hanging out with one of them, and I would just yeah. remember seeing one of them in a YouTube video, and I was like, wait, that's a Kevin Park in the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah it got messy after Zoe One Hundred One. Oh, I know you see me standing here. Hey, hey, hey. All, all canceled right Z- now. Zoe 101 was, was my show. That, I mean, I Drake liked and it Josh, too. I loved it. I and did too. I, it's so unfortunate to hear about these actors and, you know, things going on behind the scenes with the show and, and yeah. stuff like that. Because as kids watching that show, we would have never known. No. no. And now known, that they're adults, that they're of. like, Oh yeah, this the was truth awful. comes out. Yep, the truth comes out. Oh, Dan Schneider was uh, kind of a creep. 
Yeah, so. The only hope left is the grassy reunion. Yeah. Well, they've done that a couple times, I think. I mean, the legit the grassy. They explained that Jimmy got that good surgery. Oh, crazy. Jimmy! And Jimmy you know, will not be back. Drake is like, oh my god, Jimmy, you look like Drake, and they have like Drake coming. They did like, do a reunion. Remember that Drake music video? So yeah, that was the music video. That doesn't count. I'm talking like legit, like talking, like they come back to the reunion, like a legit. Actually, reunion. do a, a, a episode where Drake is the star. Drake is like he would have, have to be because he's because everyone would know who he is because back then no one knew who Drake was. That was just Jimmy. Except that was kid. that was Aubrey. Yeah, I mean yeah. Aubrey. Yeah, that was Aubrey. <laughs> <laughs> that was Aubrey. <laughs> Let us know what you think about this the, the strike going on, folks. Uh, <laughs> and twisted metal. Yeah, twisted metal. Your, your, your As Mac is level. calming it down from his. Uh, oh, he's <laughs> dying over there. <laughs> but let's go into the topic of Across the Spider Verse. God, I need to take it. Oh, I'm sweating right now. You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. I can do both! You can't run forever, kid! All right, so the topic today, it's a canon event, everyone. And we're talking about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the sequel five years after the hit movie Into the Spider-Verse. We're blessed with Across the Spider-Verse, part one of- Across. 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 French. Across the Spider-Verse. It's part one of a two-part movie with next one being Beyond the Spider-Verse. But in this movie- That is quote-unquote set to come on next year. Well, let's 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 hope. Let's hope. Yeah. But the sequel, Across the Spider-Verse, it takes place after the- uh, first film, and it has Miles going in, meeting different other Spider people, and trying to stop the multiverse from collapsing. So I'm gonna be straight honest. I didn't get a chance to watch this because I was gonna watch it last night, but I had stuff going on with the leg, and I just fell asleep. And then I worked today, couldn't get a chance to watch it a little bit. But you know, it's been out for a couple months now. I spoiled myself by reading, so it's only been out for a month. It's a okay. month, yeah, for reading, but um, I'll. Ch- clip in with I'll, I'll chip in whenever I can and everything like that. But I will say, guys, Into the Spider Verse was amazing. Like I loved it. That's like probably like one of my mm-hmm. favorite animated films of the 2010s. Like it was definitely mm-hmm. my favorite film of 2018, and it definitely mm-hmm. really showed that you know, like I said before, Miles Morales can be the new Spider Man in the MCU, and what's they're mm-hmm. probably building to. But Across the Spider Verse has somehow managed to, in some people's eyes, trump the first one of being like exceptionally great and. It was a lot of people's fears because they're going to put so many Spider people in this one. So they thought maybe, uh oh, they're going to lose what made the first one good. But apparently, it's really great. And uh, currently, right now, it has grossed six hundred sixty-five point six million dollars out of its one hundred million dollar budget. And you know, it's got some good, excuse me, reviews. It's the second highest grossing film of the year domestically, and it'll probably win some awards when it comes to the war season for animated films. But uh, I'll start off with AJ. AJ, what did you think of Across the Spider Verse? Across the Spider-Verse, what can I say that hasn't already been said about this film? Um, I I found this film to be a masterclass. Um, it was exceptional in every way. Um, it's my number one film of the year so far, and I don't really see it moving um, anytime soon uh, with what we have coming up here for the rest of the year. It was fantastic. And I'm excited to dive in a little bit deeper. I, I I didn't realize that you hadn't seen the film, Mag. I, I feel really bad for you that you haven't seen it. I know. I feel it's bad so too. Good. It's so good. I'm going. I'm gonna. I might have to just get it on digital, just rent it, and just watch it'll, it. But it'll be out on digital within a few weeks. I believe they said August. August, August begin- okay, yeah, beginning of August. I was just about to say that. So oh, yeah. uh, they are going to plan for a 4K release, a Blu-ray release, and a DVD premiere of the film. But expect yeah. it coming out around the same time as Guardians of the Galaxy, which is also expected to hit Disney Plus starting August second. So uh, yeah, good I, movies I, are going to come to digital soon. If you didn't get mm-hmm. to see it in theaters, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll watch it. But I really want to see it because, like I said, I like the first one. But so it's mm-hmm. your favorite film of the year. 
Yes, my number one. It's my number one of the year so far. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're not wrong. A lot of critics have made it their number one film of the year so far. You know, right now it's going to be a big weekend coming up. Yeah. But right now, uh, a lot of critics have loved it. Uh, people like you and I have enjoyed it because I really enjoyed it. Even my fiance really loved it. Like my fiance also enjoyed, you know, uh, Into the Spider Verse as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I really enjoyed it for what it was. It was all perfectly like well paced. It was really well planned out. The intrigue was there. Everything I loved about it, what I even loved about the first one, it was still here and felt fresh. And the story felt gr like the story was great where it was picking up and how it was going to fit into the Marvel Universe. However, the only downside to this film, I will say, is the last 10 minutes, I think. Because you didn't it, want it to end or? um, Just not it wanted to end. It was the way, like I, it's 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 all being said, you know, it's true. It's being split into two parts, but the way they don't really conclude it, like it just feels like an episode for next week's, like next week's episode. Tune into such and such to watch, you know, to find out. You like it didn't oh, feel like as concisely tied. Like oh, I know they were leaving that suspense intrigue at the end. Like yeah. I, I can't. We can't really reveal because I don't want. We don't want to reveal to Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I know you I, must I, have hated. I, I read the scenario. I know what happened. I you mean, you must still. have hated Fast X. Then I was gonna say, yeah, that's the same thing with Fast X. <laughs> yeah, Mac Fast, has beef. Well, Fast Mac X has beef worse. with Fast X. I yeah. will say that. AJ, I, you, I, AJ, I don't know if you saw. You saw that I reviewed every single Fast and Furious movie. I did. I saw that. Do you, do you guess my reaction when I rented Fast Sex on an Amazon Prime and that ending happened and I was told what the ending was and I didn't want to believe it and I watched it and I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> like, wait, I was like, wait, what? Kristen, have you seen Fast X? No. Are you into those movies at all? No. Not really. I mean, no. I, 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 they're all, those are like the popcorn films that like, yeah. you know, I treat, you know, like, you know some of the superhero films like popcorn films but mm. i just don't i just couldn't really get into the fast films i've seen oh excuse me a couple of them but not all of them i don't even remember which ones i've seen because i can't keep up with any of the plots anymore i feel like after five everything just went up in the air uh, i i i can't i can't be mad at you for that i can't Honestly, because no. this, yeah. this 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 yeah. franchise has spiraled out of control especially with nine um but <laughs> fast x fast x ended so abruptly it was like in the middle of a scene and it just cuts to black because yeah and we all we all know it's gonna be part two and we know it's gonna be a part two but that did it worse than spider-verse in my opinion <laughs> yeah i mean it's not as bad as what like you know mac how I explained he explained it to me and i was like Okay, you know, like this one, you know, it really got like the attention for, you know, what happens and what information you find out about the end. Yeah. But like, I was really excited. I went, oh, you know, I had my hands covering my face. I was like, oh, like covering my mouth, like, oh, what's going to happen? And I was like, oh, no, is this going to happen for another two hours? And I was like, no, it's not because, uh, yeah, this is a part two. And I had explained yeah. to my fiance <laughs> going in, I said, I don't know what's going to happen. But there's gonna this is gonna be split into two parts, and he had no idea. Yeah, he's like, yeah. I, like, and the point was when Across the Spider Verse was going to be made, it was supposed to be one film, but then they decided, no, nah, we're gonna split it into two parts because there's so much story to tell. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you didn't know about that going in the first time, uh, now you know. Yeah, <laughs> if you didn't know going in, you definitely found out by the end of the movie. Yeah, when I you find out that huge twist. Yeah, so. I, I will. And you're, wanting, and you're wanting the movie to keep going, even <laughs> though it's two and a half hours, but I, it, there's no more movie left. I yeah, will. you're like, what? and then I, you gotta wait until like March, like what? I will or ask maybe even later at this point. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I'll, like, I'll ask. <laughs> I'll ask y'all this. Um, with mm -hmm. the characters, do you feel like there was too many characters <laughs> for one to stand out, or do all the characters stand out? Because we got like we got punk rock Spider Man, we got. You know, Miles, we got Gwen, we got Miguel, we got the original Spider-Man, uh, Peter B. Parker, uh, we got Spider-Woman, uh, mm -hmm. and then, of course, 
Spider-Man 2099, who is voiced by Oscar Isaac, and I heard he does a really tremendous job. He does he tremendous does. in this he film. Does. He just seems so... I think angry. everybody is great. Everybody... I, everybody playing... Oh yeah, sorry. Go ahead, AJ. I'm sorry. I was just I was just gonna say I I found every voice actor to be great in in their roles in each role. Um, but to what Mac is asking, I think some of de- uh, not I think some of the characters definitely got pushed to the back burner mm-hmm. um, in this film. But I I feel like it worked. It worked for me anyway. Um, some some characters that got a lot of shine in the first film kind of got pushed back a little bit in this new one but it, 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 it had a nice balance to it um i think that's what's important with these films when you have a lot of characters you have to have a steady balance um and you have to have the characters shine just enough um to to continue um you know the story and the narrative um but not too much to where it will outshine the main character and i think this movie did it perfectly yeah you you even said that perfectly because each spider persona is so unique and they have unique ways of standing out because of their personality and Mm -hmm. each one has a unique story that all essentially like connects to all of them so, um, no one, I don't think, really outshined anybody. But I will say my favorite performances were, like, you know, Oscar Isaac and especially Haley Seinfeld. Like, Haley Seinfeld is incredible in this film. Like, I, like, really got her as an actress when I saw her in The Edge of Seventeen. And mm-hmm. then I know she did a couple of films in between that. And then when she did Across the Spider-Verse and Into the Spider-Verse, I was like, Oh God, I really buy her as an actress now. She was in Bumblebee. Yeah, she was also uh, Kate Bishop in Hawkeye. Yeah, I really like her in there too. Um, Kristen, let me ask you this: um, at your showing, did you see the movie only once? I did only see it once. Okay, so at your showing, was there any issues with the audio, like yeah, was... the, the 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 vocal audio? No, not I don't think so with mine. From what I'm trying to remember, no. Mm-hmm. was there the something time, wrong with yours the first time I, I saw it so i saw this movie twice okay. so the first time i saw it I, I went to dolby at amc i went to the dolby cinema and okay. there were a few sequences namely the beginning of the movie um kind of the intro where spider gwen is giving like a monologue kind of talking to the audience I couldn't hardly hear what she was saying. And okay. then and then the second time I saw it, I saw I watched it in IMAX, it was even worse. Oh no. Yeah, the music was a lot louder. Are you sure you weren't watching book. Tenet? <laughs> I felt like I was watching it. Tenet. Stop. I needed I needed some subtitles. <laughs> um but no, I, I I I did feel like there were some issues with audio and then when I got home, I looked online and other people were having issues with their audio as well and i was like okay i don't i don't feel like i was the odd man out like i need to get my ears checked because (laughs) people were having this issue yeah my coworker at work she saw the movie and she said there was audio issues too and i did read there was like they actually re-released the audio did she see it in like a 2d format no she saw it imax okay because i didn't get unfortunately where i saw it uh and unfortunately where i'm moving to uh there's like the closest imax is now 30 minutes away so uh yeah. the way we saw it is it, like uh, just a 2d standard format you know okay. Okay. i mean it was fine i don't think that version had any problems mm-hmm. I, I mean if they were i mean i thought it was fine i mean i got I, I, I the only thing is i will say Maybe mm-hmm. there was a, like a little audio with, uh, you know, Jack Quaid appears in the film, and uh, maybe his audio felt a little meh, but mm-hmm. otherwise, I felt Haley's was pretty good. Haley's Haley's was pretty good throughout the film. It just was that beginning part, and then there were some times in like throughout the film where some of the characters were speaking, and me and my wife look at each other and say, "What they say." you know oh. <laughs> yeah, so 
um, especially Spider Punk. And I, I think kind of the the idea of behind his character is like he kind of like mumbles some things sometimes, but that I felt that uh, a few times as he was talking, like what he say, you know. So, okay. so I don't know. I don't know if that that was a huge issue with everybody, but um, I'm glad that you didn't have those issues. At least from what I can recall or notice, but yeah. I mean, I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. I mean, then again, like. I've been adjusting to the idea of having everything with subtitles. <laughs> so I, maybe I just need that. <laughs> so I wanna, uh, what are you gonna say, Matt? Uh, oh no, you can go ahead first. I was just gonna I was just gonna state something funny. Like one time I was uh going to go see a movie and I accidentally got the showing that had subtitles. Hey, and why I'm, not? I'm, I mean, not gonna uh, lie, that's pretty epic. I'm watching the movie. And like words appear on the screen, and I'm like, "Is that supposed to happen?" And then I look at my ticket; it says "captions on screen." I said, "Yo, I did not realize that they had this in theaters at all." Um, I went to go see Venom: Let There Be Carnage, and there were subtitles, and I was like, "Okay, cool." To be fair, I mean, I mean Venom, you need some subtitles. <laughs> yeah. I watch I watch movies with subtitles all the time. Me at too. Home. So I, I, it didn't bother me. I was just like, I didn't realize I had this in the theater. Okay, cool. That's kind of um, my friend last year. She was going to go see The Unbearable Way to Master Talent, but the theater she went to, the speakers exploded, and the movie got canceled. The oh, speakers dang. exploded. Yep. Wow. How does, does that it, happen? I don't Oppenheimer, know. Oppenheimer wasn't even probably. out yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. they got... They got they were blasted from Tenet. They didn't know how to fix themselves. <laughs> oh my god, leave Tenet alone. It wasn't that bad with the oh, I no. have to make fun of it at this point for Nolan. Um but I don't know. next I, I know. guess speaking of audio, um, how was uh-huh. the soundtrack? Because I heard a lot of people said that this soundtrack was better than the first one. I love the first one soundtrack. The soundtrack is fantastic. I've had that soundtrack on repeat all summer long. Oh all summer. Especially the animated credits, um, the song behind the animated credits. Uh-huh. I absolutely love that song. So I don't know if uh, Kristen really listened to it, but I I've listened love, to a little bit. I love it. I mm-hmm. thought it was good. What mm-hmm. does any of the songs top Sunflower? No. No. None of the none of, none, of the, none of the songs top Sunflower, but I would say probably the rest of the album. It, it tops the rest of the album. Really? Um, so even better than What's Up Danger? I love What's Up Danger, but it's it's behind Sunflower, mm-hmm. and it's behind a lot of the tracks from the second film okay. for me. Then what about the animation? Because Across Survivors came under fire for apparently some uh, very bad working conditions for um, the... Uh, like uh, some people came out and they said that uh, they were forced to do some uh, very time crunchy animation details mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. uh how was the unrealistic uh deadlines and things like that yeah mm-hmm. um so uh well how was the animation was it as good as the first one or better oh it's i think it's a little it's just as good as the original but even more because each frame is also very unique unlike the way mm-hmm. each character is mm-hmm. like you notice like the color changes like in the little bit before Gwen like the room changes like it gets to be a little cooler colors with like pink and purples and blues and um oh I'm sorry AJ I don't know if you're gonna say something I feel like I don't mean no, to cut anybody not a, off go no, ahead not at all no not at all I was listening to what you had to say about it um but as for me this is a master class in in animation in, in my in my opinion um, like you were saying, Kristen, with the, the 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 tone, the changes of the backgrounds and and things like that, uh, you could see in certain sequences. Um, in I'm not gonna try. I'm try, I'm gonna try not to get into detail, serious detail, but like when different emotions are being felt by the characters, you can see it in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, like how how it changes and how the animation style changes, and you can kind of see like drips of watercolor, you know, when when someone is sad or or feeling you know um, 
right. uh, cathartic or you know anything like that so it, it 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 was amazing to me and i cannot wait to get this movie home so i can freeze frame slow it down rewind uh, i i can't wait there's a lot of unique beautifulness to each side it, it, really it is in the second time i watched the film i noticed so much more um with the animation and how many layers were put into you know the animation and and even with the villain mm -hmm. um so yeah i i absolutely loved the animation in this film does across the spider verse have that signature moment because i will say like with into the spider verse i think my favorite and kind of what's become an iconic shot was when miles took that leap of faith and you just see the image of him the city mm -hmm. in reverse there. does it across the spider verse have that moment because i feel like the moment for that in that film would have been when all the spider people were chasing him they're like because mm -hmm. the one of my favorite jokes in the trailer is like attention all stations stop spider-man Oh, who, you, me, you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They all go after That's, him and they uh, all know which one it is. And um, I, I feel like that took a lot of time to, to animate. That's a very, that, that looks like a very colorful scene. It basically, what it all leads up to is this huge train sequence. I cannot even imagine how many people had to work on all the details for that scene. It, <laughs> there's sure. like, um, it's insane is what you're talking about. Um. I am trying to think of which shot it is, but I know what you're talking about. Uh, AJ, maybe you want to elaborate a little bit more on that if I, you want to. I, I, yeah, I will say that the train sequence might be the closest thing you get to the leap of faith scene in the first movie. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's a specific scene, though, that um, has that hype level, I might want to say. Like, that hype level of the leap of faith scene every time i see that scene i i get chilled down my spine um but i will say pretty much this entire movie there's so many sequences where i am like encaptured by what's on screen and i do get those chills um but i i can't really say a specific sequence yeah that feels like that yeah, I completely agree with that. I think I think forever will be that scene will be the one the leap of faith scene. I think that will always be like the legacy mm -hmm. scene. Mm -hmm. But I don't see that in this one. Mm -hmm. So because I'm trying, I was trying to think back of mm -hmm. everything, but yeah, there really like isn't until uh, until I rewatch it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of. This movie is kind of tough because I, I don't see. I'm I'm tiptoeing. <laughs> yeah, no, I am too. I'm you guys, don't, you guys so, don't have to. You guys don't have to. I know, no, I know, but, still... but I just don't. I I already feel bad about the Flash thing. Oh, don't feel bad. So, oh, you're fine. The Flash, fine with the Flash. The Flash <laughs> to me, I feel like wouldn't be as is nowhere compared to Spider Man. I feel that's like. true. That's true. Um, but I, I will say that um, yeah, I love the animation in this movie um there are several sequences where i i just get chills like because i, I just noticed something that happened in the background the the changes in animation or you know the the soundtrack is beautifully used and things like that i i absolutely love the characters in this movie as well um the new characters are great including the new character yes the new characters are great um, I will say I have some issues with Miguel's logic. I was gonna um, say, yeah, movie. he seems very angry. Yes, he's a he's a, he's a little angry, and he kind of has a reason to be. But I think he lets. I understand that, why too. Yeah, I think he lets his anger and ultimately his fear control uh, the way he does things, and and his logic. It kind of skews his logic. So, you know, um, the whole canon event thing, I'm sure you heard about that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh. I like that sound effect. Yeah. What? yeah it's, what? It's an amazing... I don't know what was that. <laughs> it's an amazing sound. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the whole canon event thing, uh, I, I feel like that's a flawed concept. 
Um, and once you watch the movie, you might understand what I mean by that. Um, but I don't know. We'll see in the next film to, you know, maybe, maybe it, you know, uh, comes together a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, Things are, I will say a little questionable, not so much questionable, but I understand why Miguel's feelings are that. And then once you see the final 10 minutes where Miguel's in the situation that he is, but then you see what's going to happen, then you're like, okay, now his emotions are definitely going to change once this, once who he's about to see, you know, do you know what I'm talking about, AJ? Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, knowing, like, I'm trying to say who may, I'm going to quote, you're going to like quote me on this if you want, like who may be coming back Mm -hmm. to help him because, Mm -hmm. Uh, Gwen, you know, who has a great character arc change, I will say, has the strongest one mm-hmm. in this film more than Miles. Mm-hmm. Even though it's a more focus, I feel like I'm Gwen in this film. But, you know, <laughs> who has like a great character arc change in this and along with some of the characters who are gonna help her mm-hmm. with I guess um, stop uh, what's his face? Uh, Oscar Isaac's uh, character. I can't uh, forget. Miguel, uh, Miguel O'Hara. The mm-hmm. Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Mm-hmm. So, um, I guess do you want to quote unquote say he's the villain? I don't really know if the. I don't know because if that's I wanna... what I was judging. You know, yeah, I was it's, like, it's is tough. he the villain? It's tough but because no, it, because his heart is in. Well, because... I will. Say, I will say his goal is it villainous or malicious. Yeah. But the way he's going about it, it kind of is. It is you yeah. got to kind of think the same thing with Thanos. Like he has yes. the right mindset, like about you know different things. Yeah, I want to make sure there's enough resources for the world. But uh, I'm gonna kill half the population. The population. <laughs> so like, yeah, he has he has you know the right ideas at heart, but going with the way he's going about it is just it's not quite right um yeah so i I guess you can say he's a villain that's what i was Uh, wondering because i was like questioning that a couple times since i've seen it and i was like Uh is oscar is like really the villain besides the spot and the spot you know played by jason schwartzman Mm -hmm. you know and i do like the spot i don't think he's also uh i think he's actually better than kingpin from the first film i what? actually enjoyed you didn't, you didn't like what he's like it's not about no the i spot. do i it's do like... but i think the most entertaining spot not spot not not to be <laughs> that spot, but the point I, I think i was more entertained by jason schwartzman than kingpin i think kingpin is a really an iconic villain and a great villain but the spot was just so entertaining because i'm not from, as familiar with the spot but then what i saw Me i was either. like oh my gosh he's great but, like jason it, schwartzman was like a perfect casting for this yeah i i, I can agree with that i can and agree I under- with that and i understood his motives and i was like okay yeah i get and i get it why you know now he's running all over gonna be running all over this multiverse you know but Kristen, stuff. It's, yeah. it's not about the multiverse it's about the Mets baby the Mets come on let's go to the Mets let's go oh <laughs> my god <laughs> I, I will say with the whole Miguel thing um I guess the one clip I, not seeing the movie I can see how Miguel's angry from the trailer it's just like the one clip I keep seeing I don't know what the context is or how it started and it's like I don't even know if I can repeat the joke it's not bad it's just no, repeat it. It's, I think it might be okay. The joke was like, I respect every single Spider-Man in here. And Miles is like, this guy comes to me. He's like, no, you're black. Ah! I was like, oh, I, geez. I don't I don't think it's a race thing. I was no, like, it's no, not a race I was thing. Making, I, I was making sure, but I was like, where did this beef come from? No, like, I don't think. No, it's not a black. It's not a black <laughs> oh, thing. It's no. not, it's not a race, race thing at no. all. I think they were just. Being. pointing that out but he just seems <laughs> very angry but i can i know miguel O'Hara's character and he is kind of like the more serious kind of like the more like cynical spider-man and everything mm. like that and you know i'm kind of glad he's gonna get in because i wouldn't mind seeing a live action version of him and you know Oscar. i wouldn't either um, i mean where we get a particular character i mean it wouldn't be surprising if 
I know Donald Oscar Glover's Isaac. in Oscar Isaac, okay. <laughs> so I mind if Oscar Isaac shows up into the multiverse. I mean, hello. Like, oh, well, he, is, he is Moon Knight. All of a sudden, Knight. watch. Uh, he is Moon Knight. Oh, right. Oh, my God. You know, but, oh, my God. Imagine if Moon Knight and him. In both of you know? Yeah, they can be both there. Then Apocalypse like, shows up. Oscar Why not? Isaac can be, like, there, and then he sees his two Marvel characters, and they can recreate the spider scene like you. Then Apocalypse is like, <laughs> what about me? Like, we don't talk about you. Yeah, no, we, you get out of here. Um, but I will, yeah. I will ask this because I've been a big proponent. Shameek Moore, how is he as Miles Morales in this one? Because I love Shameek Moore. He's, this love goes back to when he was in the Incredible Crew. If you remember that Nick Cannon sketch show from the Cartoon Network, I, I watched it a few times and he was in on it. And then he did Dope, which is one of my favorite. He uh, was dope, dope is so good. He was one of my, in Dope. One of my favorite coming of age movies of the 2010s, and that's like my super bad of the 2010s. And mm-hmm. he, he's killing it as Miles Morales, and he wants to play Miles in the live action. But you he's know, he's got to do it. That's all uh, I gotta say. He got. I would, be, I, I would love that. How is he as Miles in this one? Fantastic. I mean, I he's think still he's. Continues to be I, fantastic. Th- I think it's it, it's on par with the first one. Um, he's he's really good. If you like the performance, I mean, Mac, I'll just say this. If you like the performance is in the first film, then you're going to love it in here. Okay, that's good. Yeah. But yeah. I, I guess the one thing is, I, is it time? So since 20, okay, so me being a comic nerd and everything, I've seen the progression of Miles Morales from beginning to now. So when Miles Morales was first introduced, he was not well received because it was like, oh, you're gonna go woke with making him multi blah 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 the whole complaints and everything and him mm-hmm. replacing Spider Man and stuff like that. Right. Of course. They slowly integrated him. You know, they had Secret Wars, he became like a such a big character, he became a little bit more popular. He was in the animated TV show, which he was voiced by Donald Glover, I will say. There's a lot mm-hmm. of connections with him. Um, then he was introduced in the first Spider-Man game where he was the uh, side character, but everyone knew him at that point. And then he had his own video game and then Into the Spider-Verse came out. So now it's to the point where Miles Morales is starting to become a little bit more popular than Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. And what, like I I predicted like years ago is that when they introduced Miles Morales the, to, to be the new main like comic book Spider-Man, it was going to give people old enough like to be introduced to him. So that mm-hmm. way when he comes to the MCU or if he can, they'll know who he is and it will be comfortable with him. But seeing how he's killing it with the animated and the video games, is it time to bring in Miles Morales to the MCU to be the new Spider-Man if Tom Holland, you know, because he's talked about wanting to walk away from Spider-Man. Is it, would it be a good idea to finally bring in Miles Morales since he's like a red, he's kind of a white hot character to bring in now because it's been like so many years as they've been building him up to be the new main life Spider-Man. Is it time to bring Miles Morales in? As long as, uh, I guess... Tom Holland gets Zendaya at the end of his Spider-Man series, then fine. I mean, like, I think that's all what? Spider-Man wants with his character. Oh my God. Krista, you said what? What do you What do you mean? I said, about, as long uh, as Tom Holland gets his Zendaya at the end of the film, then it's gets fine. His, gets his, gets his, his Zendaya? His Zendaya? <laughs> I'm, I'm confused by what you mean by that. You know, because, you know, him and Zendaya are together. I know. You you want them to be, you, you want them to be together at the end of Tom Holland's Spider-Man run? No. Oh, am I saying it wrong? I could no, be no, wrong. No, no, ask- no. I'm just asking. No, I, I, I just... want Tom Holland and, you know, Zendaya to, be, to together, be together. to be together. Okay, that's what, that's what I thought you meant. That's what I was saying. I mean... No. <sighs> it's all good. I think he made his decision that he didn't want to be with her, though. Well, he wants to be with her, but he, he feel feels like, he's like gonna it's too fix much. It. Over- <sighs> I hmm. don't know. I feel like okay. there's a chance for him to fix it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just want more Spider-Man. You just have to get her memory <laughs> back, remember? Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe he can risk it for her. He already messed up the spell together. multiple times. I don't. I don't know anymore. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He might yeah. meet some. He might meet somebody named Felicia Hardy that takes his mm, heart, that steals his heart away. That's true. I mean, I know, you know, if I, was, I was gonna say if I was Spider Man, I'd be like, "Listen, MJ, you're cool, but I'm, I'm gonna go for the other option." Now. Yeah, so really, yeah, like, like maybe there's it? a maybe there's a Gwen Stacy out there for him. What was that game? What was it? Web of Shadows, where um, yeah, he had the Venom suit and like Mary Jane's a clown. He's like, "No, I can't leave her." Dude. Like he gave her Venom. Like, yeah, I'd risk it. Too. I'd do it too. Sorry, Mary Jane. I like redheads are cool, but you know, this my cat. So I, but, like, I, I actually want to see. 
different characters with now that he kind of has a new slate he's mm-hmm. got his his slate cleaned i kind of want to see new characters after no way home so like I don't bring, know. bring in like black cat uh yeah yeah Rhino. definitely yes yes and you don't really have to bring oh, back mj and ned i think their stories are over oh there are i know i know it's sad but there are more characters in this universe that can help them. I know, but I love is it those characters. Tom and Zendaya. Tom and Zendaya. But uh, I, I would, I'd want to see. I that. mean, you've seen what Tom Holland's been up to lately. <laughs> I mean, he run around in a. It's more is than it, just a crowded room. Is it, oh, is it? Is Zendaya been up to something too? And They're he like, said, I'll do you one better. Yeah, so like, let me broken. raise this. And he was playing like poker. He's like, let me raise this. So let me like, raise that man. Tom looks sad in the picture. He goes, I'm like, this poor man. He's probably seen some shit. I'm like, oh, this poor guy. <laughs> no. Did you see him go around one day and paparazzi caught them? And there were like two young girls. They were like, oh, Zendaya or something like that. And they were like, and Zendaya took like photos with whoever there was. And, you know, Tom Hans, like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I think Tom has dealt with some some things mentally. Like he actually came out and said, yeah, you know, some things lately that he's dealt with. You know, kind of alcohol. depression and yeah. alcohol abuse, and you know, not thinking clearly. And he said that he's been sober for a while now, for like a year now, and that's like made him the happiest that he's ever been. Thank he kind of wants to take he kind of wants to take a break from acting. And you know, kind of live life a little bit for for a while, and and I don't blame him for that. Yeah, I, no. I think, he does a lot of think... philanthropy work, and he likes golfing. He loves his dog, so if he wants to do yeah. that, and he's got all the money in the world at this point, he never and... has to work again, so it's fine. Right, give yourself some time, some mental rest, and then come back, you know, fresh. Yeah, I think we we um kind of got off topic a little bit, but. You yeah, know, oh, I want I want the be- I want the best from my man Tom. You know, yeah, so. we love you, man. Don't do otherwise. Again, let's bring a <laughs> let's bring Shamik into the. Uh, but is he too Spider-Man. old to be? Is he too old to be Miles? Like, how would you introduce him? Would you just, introduce just him age? Like- just age him up a little bit. Say, oh, this is seven years later. This is eight or, years later. Yeah. Or yeah. just bring him in. He's like, I've been Spider Man for years in my dimension, and he can be that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Do, oh, yeah. Do something yeah. like that. Or he could be. I think Shamik would be a cool static shot. No, I want him to be Spider Man. I, I would. I would want him to be Spider Man. I, I don't he know would what want they're to doing. Play with years Shock. from now, too. I feel like he's going to be like continue to be like. I feel like he's going to be like one of those actors who would want to be like forty and be like, I still want to portray Spider Man. You know. At this point, I don't know what I want from DC. I, I'm Me so I want- I'm so disconnected from the DC universe right now. Me too. Like, I don't even know what's going on. I think happen. James Gunn is still figuring out that whatever that vision is. I mean, given what well, happened with well, Flash, well, and now well, we got Blue Beetle. Just, you know, I know Blue Beetle is going to start it, but we don't even know how that's going to turn out. We won't know we until like know, a little more know, than a, less than a month. We don't even know what's going to happen with Aquaman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah third reshoots. Let's go. Third reshoots. And they can't even do two that Batmans, now. Two Batmans. Uh, like, Who knows what's going on? Getting, getting Superman. Although I like the casting for Superman, but I'm I'm still yeah. Confused. Superman casting is perfect. I don't know what's gonna like. Yeah, DC's like, I, we're still get, apparently we're still gonna get the Matt Reeves or no the J.J. Abrams um black Superman movie. I guess maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But, Who knows, man? <laughs> but at least, at least Sony. Who knew that Sony's animation division would get their shit together after? Who knew Logan Amy movie? Pascal? could jump in with her two cents and say let me figure this out this is reparation this is um not, well, whoops not wrong word this is um <laughs> this is um this is pay this is redemption for canceling uh gendy tartakovsky's popeye movie because i wanted that popeye movie but mm-hmm. i can't wait for um i hope the sequel comes out because i want to see that in theaters because i feel like spider verse you definitely have to see these in theaters oh it'll be in theaters like we i think we were just saying with the strike i think some stuff is going to be delayed however since this was filmed uh I think there's there'll still be a chance it'll be a release. We just probably won't get promotion with the stars. That's, no that's what the stars can't do that. But with the film like Spider Verse, people are gonna see it. So for sure, for sure. But I guess I last thing we'll probably end it on, unless there's anything anyone else wants to add with Spider Verse. Do you want you know cited to 
God, I don't, they did. How what were the references to the MCU? Because I saw there's a few references. Because I guess the main one was like, yeah, that nerd and that Doctor Strange did on Earth, whatever. And they mentioned like no way alone. There's like, does it does that tie? Does that make into the the Spider Verse movies the um canon to the MCU or in the multiverse the whole thing? Um, I think that was really the only thing that was said regarding the MCU. Um, if it's not shown. Think- then yeah i mean i i i don't rem- i don't recall any other references to the mcu um in the film but it just acknowledges that it happened so it is canon technically um there was references to the other spider-man films as well mm-hmm. so um i guess technically it's all canon yeah <laughs> Um, I mean, it's mostly shown than more said. Well, I will yeah, say that. Yeah, that one line um, where Miguel is talking about the little nerd on, you know, Doctor Strange. Yeah, that that was spoken, but everything else, you know, you see a visual, you know, with the other Spider-Man. With the connection, with the, or with at least the connection to the yeah, Spider-Man sure. world. Mm-hmm. I, I was going to say, um, well, you know, the MC is like, oh, I was animated, but I'm live action now. What's your question? Oh no, I said that with the MCU with the whole um uh what is it called? Um the uh <laughs> MCU with the whole multiverse be like, oh yeah, we were animated but we were live action. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't yeah, I couldn't understand what you were saying. You just there, kind of said it a little fast, sorry. <laughs> there was um there were some some live action sequences shown in the movie, so I don't think they're gonna if they do anything like that, I, I can see them taking Miles and bringing him to live action rather mm-hmm. than bringing a live action character to animation, if that think, makes sense. Do you think that's going to happen with the third one? Because I feel like that the the one rumor I've heard is that they're going to that's the third ones where they're going to pull him into the MCU, make it live action. But I think that's far fetched. I don't know. It's beyond the Spider Verse. I don't know. It kind of sounds like it is. I mean, it sounds like pretty close at this point to the movie beyond. I think I don't even know what we're gonna expect. Who, Who knows? knows? We could get Tom Holland appearing, and then he's talking to Miguel in it. Yeah, Maybe Tom Holland. <laughs> yeah, possibly. I just, I, I don't know. I, I feel like these films thrive on their animation. So I don't want to. I don't want it to be overshadowed by bringing in live action characters or bringing these animated characters out of animation to live action. I, I don't want too much of that. Okay. Um, but you know, if you do it here and there, kind of like how they did in this particular movie, I I wouldn't I wouldn't hate it. But... No, I wouldn't hate it either. But uh, yeah, that, that's do it, it sparingly. There you go. Um, watch across Spider Verse is on digital. It's gonna be on digital soon. Uh, and uh, yeah, watch it's it. It's still in theaters. Still in theaters. It's still see. in theaters. Go check it out in theaters if you can. Yes, go if you see haven't it. seen it. Uh, Mac, we got to get you out to the theater to see that man. I know. He still got Oppenheimer at least. He'll see That's something true. That's very, true. Hopefully, very good. I'm sure Oppenheimer. Mac, are good. you seeing Barbie? Yeah, my uh, cousin and I, when I go to Myrtle Beach, we're going to go see it down okay. there. Okay. So, and that's, then when I, that's perfect. When, when I come back, I don't know what I'll probably see. I'll probably play catch up because I wanted to see the new Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken movie because that movie looked funny to me because it was mm-hmm. like F you to Disney. But, you know, that's just me. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude, I'll, I'll watch across the Spider-Verse when I come back. But uh, okay. um, yeah. yeah so, I'll say it's worth the 20 bucks to spend it. it Better is. than fast. I I'm think. Sure. <laughs> Well, it was on That's sale for seventeen. True. It was on sale for seventeen dollars, but you know, um, three dollars off. Yeah, but um, <laughs> let us know in the comments below what did you think of Across the Spider Verse, and are you excited about Beyond the Spider Verse, and what are your theories for Beyond the Spider Verse? Do you think they'll do a Venom and pull him into the live action one? And he's like, let's go talk to this Peter Parker, and then like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or will Morbius show up in the next one? Oh, more Morbius. Time. What about Venom? But um, not not but uh, uh but let if we're done with across the spider verse let's get right into some box office numbers because we got to talk about a movie that has failed miserably the the 
All right, so the box office report for this past weekend, which was the weekend of July 14th through the 16th. So the top 10, number 10, we got The Little Mermaid with $2.3 million. Joyride coming in with number nine at $2.6 million. No Hard Feelings coming in with $3.2 million, number eight. Rise of the Beast, $3.4 million, number seven. Across the Spider-Verse, $6 million at number six. Elemental, number five at $9 million. Number four is Indiana Jones with $12.2 million. Number three, Insidious the Red Door with $13 million. Uh, number two is Sound of Freedom with $27.2 million. And coming in, shockingly, not really. Um, and number one is Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 with $54.6 million. So, Kristen, the ones we were talking about that did horrendous would probably be No Hard Feelings, uh, Indiana Jones and um, Elemental because Indiana Jones had a 55.3% loss in um, oh. revenue and then number four because it was number two. Elemental mm-hmm. had a 9.3% drop and No Hard Feelings had a 39.3% drop. Yeah. I remember when we were first we did the last episode, I was like questioning to go see No Hard Feelings and I just did it. It's, I heard it's very awkward. I just I, decided to probably I, give up. I saw no hard feelings. What did and you think? Honestly, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, it isn't high art, and it isn't something that you know the groundbreaking. Um, we've seen this type of thing before, but mm-hmm. it's a fun time. Um, I think Jennifer Lawrence uh, does a a pretty good job. I, I when I think of Jennifer Lawrence, I don't really think comedy, mm-hmm. so that's kind of what was throwing me off a little bit for the movie going in. Um, but she actually did really good. She hit those comedic beats, and um, her co-star uh, was really good as well. So I don't know. I, I I dug the film. I'll probably pick it up, you know, um, eventually. Mm-hmm. So I must also ask, since we're in this age, like right now with two raunchy comedies, which one did you prefer, Joyride or No Hard Feelings? I feel I like those prob- two were like the raunchy female comedies at the moment. So which one would you say which one was better? I probably would go with Joyride just say, because yeah. it had more heart. Mm-hmm. It it hit those emotional beats even even more than No Heart Feelings did. No Heart Feelings had some emotional sequences and, and had some some heartfelt elements to it. But this movie, like, actually, I, I, I kind of was getting a little teary-eyed with Joyride. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. It, it touched me in some ways. So um, I, see. I, w- I would have to say Joyride, but both were good, uh, well-written comedies. I I don't know. And, and I also saw The Blackening, and I, I felt like that was pretty well-written as well. So yeah, this, year, this year with comedies... I wasn't disappointed like I've been recently with the recent years. That's good to hear. Mm-hmm. Like, can we talk about how Indiana Jones' dad that scene is fucking bombing? With Did this you... vid- I, 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 I watched it. You, you watched saw it? it? Yeah. It a particular is... way, I'm sure. Shut up. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> Kristen, it... did you see it? No. It... But here's the thing. You know when Applebee's was doing that promotion where it was yeah. like, you see the thing, are you like go to those the, the restaurant ticket. and you get a free ticket? My sister yeah. went and she's like, oh, here's this free ticket, we should go. And then I just didn't delayed, and now it's like, oh, uh, this movie <laughs> time is... is over. I guess we'll just I'll just wait to watch you. So she's like, are we ever gonna go see? It? And I was like, nah, I don't know. This movie was sucks. This movie sucks. Um, 
that the first 20 minutes it like everyone said if you probably heard the other reviews is that the first 20 minutes with the da terrors before is literally the only time i felt like a an Indiana jones movie um and then after that it's just very depressing uh phoebe waller bridge is extremely annoying as the new like sidekick to Indy, and it's it's not good and i don't even know if i want to blame james mangold for this, I think it, it's it didn't feel like a James Mangold no, film. Like you I, did not feel his style or vision at all in that movie. I'm thinking it's more of a studio movie with a, yeah. someone who's <clears throat> at the top. Hopefully, will get fired after this. Um, but like <laughs> it was not good. And how they explain what happened to Shia LaBeouf, I'm like, damn, that's a little dark. Oh no, I'm nervous to find Do you out. Know? You guys want to know or no? I saw the movie. Well, yeah, okay. he knows. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Can you tell me when it's like when we're done recording? Because I don't want to spoil the audience for at and least. This movie's a month old. Old. No one gives a shit about Indiana Jones. Just, hey, you hey. say that about the Flash. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that. Tell me when we're off the air. Um, but yeah, I, I was not. I did not enjoy Indiana Jones. I, I was very bored. Okay, i i have a I have a little bit of a different take. Um, okay, but I will I will say I do agree that the movie wasn't great. Um, but I do have a soft spot for Indiana Jones films, even Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which I know isn't a great movie. I know mm-hmm. it isn't. It isn't even good. But I I don't know. I have a soft spot for Indy. Um, all of the films have something special to offer um to me anyway um this movie was could have been written a lot tighter um and there's something that happens at the end of the movie that either you're gonna be like oh that that's cool that's that's different or you're gonna be like that's kind of idiotic and why would they do that um so Mac knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. With the, with the I'll end of that ask movie. that at the end, and yes. I will just wait to watch where it is. I have an, I think I have an idea because I didn't look up any spoilers, but I really want to discuss it now. I mean, AJ, yeah. AJ, so, AJ will, yeah. you, will you say that this was that Crystal Skull was worse than this? Because I, I think I can say this is worse than Crystal Skull. No, I, I actually enjoyed this film more really? than Crystal Skull. What yes. is everyone keeps saying? I like Crystal Skull better than this. Most, like, no, most people would agree with you, though, that this movie is worse, the worst of all of the films. And I can't quite agree to that because I did have some fun where we were doing some some car chase scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the action was kind of cool, even though there was some messy CGI here and there. Um this movie is nowhere near perfect and i can fully admit that there were points of the film where i did get bored too but there are some other parts of the film where i had a lot of fun and i i didn't take it too seriously when i walked into it because i knew the mixed reviews i knew that it wasn't going to be a, a fantastic movie um and i i walked away satisfied so I know not a lot of people can say the same, but that's just me. And then Elemental is also bombing too, so Pixar is not doing good too. I um, have not seen Elemental. I watched the trailer and I was like, eh. I think I'm going to skip this one actually. <laughs> I yeah. think we, yeah, we talked about our opinions last time about it, right, Mac? Yeah, that's just crazy. It's like we're at the point where people are just like, ah, nah, well, no Pixar movie. Like, mm-hmm. Pixar movies used to be like, you go to the movies to see it, but like, damn. It used to be like an event. Yeah. Well, also, but also, I think there's so much coming out this summer. Mm-hmm. So you kind of mm-hmm. have to pick and choose like that's what you're what actually I... going to see, and something is going to yeah. fall through the cracks. It doesn't matter who you are. Some unless you do this for a living and you have to go see all these movies, if you have a life, something's gonna slip through the cracks. Um, but yeah, it's just I don't know. I wanted to see it, and I'm the Little Mermaid. You know, that's good. That's falling out of the top ten. I, I just can't. I can't with it, Disney right now. No. But yeah, the last thing Disney did was Strange World, right? Uh, as far as animation. Yep, and that didn't do well because the advertising was not good. The, well, that and what they did have for advertising was 
very generic and una- mm-hmm. unappealing to most people. So mm-hmm. why would they go spend their Thanksgiving, you know, seeing that when they can, you know, be spending time with family or, you know, doing whatever it was, it came out around Thanksgiving time. So yeah, and like, it was, it went up against black Panther too. It went against black Panther and uh, what's the other movie? Oh, um, glass onion oh yeah uh, knives yeah. out two had come out around that time too and they had a limited theatrical release so also I know there was uh that. the timothy chalamet movie too because i went to go see that with my friends which one bones and all oh yeah 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 that one came there, there out too that, there was that one too Ian La- that had a limited release and you know strange world was also going to be playing around the same time as you know the timothy chalamet movie so uh there was people, just other choices. People were yeah. trying to see other stuff, stuff worth their time. And I don't blame them for not seeing Strange World. I I actually saw it. I, I saw it in theater. I did a double feature with Glass Onion and Strange World. And I, I didn't hate Strange World, but it, it, it wasn't anything that stood out, as especially for Disney. You know? No, yeah, it was, I know it was, it's on Disney Plus. I just haven't watched it yet. I was like, I've talk, I want to watch it, but just th- there's a reason for that. I watched it. And it was, <laughs> I just watched other things. <laughs> there's other things to watch. A lot when, of it. Then when Pixar with Elemental, like Elemental, just didn't look. I know that the director. This is like kind of a personal project for him. I feel bad, but with Elemental, it just didn't look any. It kind of just you look at it it's like this is literally like Zootopia, but with elements. Like kind of. I'm like, just hoping Wish mm. is better. Yeah, but I like, saw the. <laughs> I have not rocked with any of the Pixar stuff because I, I didn't like turning red. And all the people were like, they loved it. And I just didn't like that. And I didn't like Lightyear either. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. Elemental. And then there's this other movie that's coming out. The, the next Pixar movie um got like a teaser. And that mm-hmm. movie doesn't look great. Was it Wish? No, that's I think that's um that's a that's just a an- basic that Disney yeah, I think animation. That's Disney I was just animation. gonna say that. Oh what's the um, next what's the next it, Wish it's with Ariana DeBose and Chris Pine. I think I've talked I've talked about it on the show uh, with you. I was talking about Pixar. I was gonna look at oh, the, Pixar. Pixar, the Pixar movie, I think oh, it's called Elo? El- Elio. Or Elio. Like yeah. Yeah. Um I saw the teaser for that too. Doesn't look great. It definitely gives um turning red vibes i feel that <laughs> so i don't know this one might be okay but you know it doesn't look that promising from the trailers so then the other ones they have is inside out 2 and then um toy story 5s and development so too. those are all sequels though so yeah yeah but the original is sequel. making its way that's you know original anymore it's all like now they're going to rely on these sequels so which yeah, is... because those could because the movies that they're making that are original aren't doing well. Yeah, so they're which trying is a to shame. go back. They're trying to go back to you know what's familiar and what's gonna make them money. Yeah, I really wish they did the um the the Jack and the Beanstalk one that got canceled. Remember oh, Newt? No. What is Newt? I think it was like another one. It was like I had to look it up. I think it was Newt or I had to oh look. it. It says, I look at a Pixar film titled Newt, which was set to be directed by Gary Rydstrom, was announced in April 08, with Pixar planning to release it on, in 2011, which is later late in 2012, but it had finally been canceled in early 2010. John Lasseter noted that the film's proposed plot line was similar to another film, Rio, which was released in 2011. Oh, okay. I was just like, remember that? So, that was a thing. <laughs> I did not. I, mean, I, know, I, I don't think I knew that about that. That was a thing. <laughs> I just, but it, uh, it involved birds? I, I no, guess so. Well, I, it involved the lizard. Oh, so oh, a gonna, lizard. Or like a gecko. So it was going like, to be. I don't a, know. The, was it a lizard? I, I don't know. I'm going to look it up. Sorry. I this mean, is the last thing and then we'll wrap up. It looks, <laughs> I mean, it looks like it was going to be probably just like Rio. So they were like, probably like, nah. But listen to the cast. It was supposed to be involved Delroy Lindo, William Shatner, Jim Cummings. I mean,. I would have paid money to see that. So yeah. Gecko. Don't worry, Lindo, just being a like a freaking lizard, a gecko. That would be funny. And Martin Sh- or was it no, no? Okay, wait. It was supposed to star. Oh, are they making it now? Because now it says something like Fandonia. Fan new is a 2017. This has to be a fake thing. That's be fake. 
It has to be fake but unless it's gonna release. I will say just just real quick with looking at it says new initial release date was set to be July tw- seventh to twenty twenty seven. Well, no, it, it said twenty twelve, but they canceled it in twenty ten. Okay, wait, yeah, this is something fake. Okay, uh, but looking at Pixar's like for the last, I'll go from twenty fifteen or twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen to now, and we can you know they had Inside Out which is good. Good Dinosaur, which I think is overhated on. Finding Dory, which was was okay. Cars 3, which is the best Cars movie. Coco, Incredible 2, which was incredibly disappointing. Toy Story 4, Unnecessary. Onward, uh, Soul, Luca, Turning Red, Lightyear, and Elemental. Anyways, Newt, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. No one cares. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Rio's, that was our show. I Rio's think we need better. to go to bed. Nah, Rio, Rio's better. <laughs> Make Rio three. I want Bruno Mars in there again. Rio three. Rio three. Let's get the let's get the petition going. Let's do it. But yes, that has been this episode of the MK Production Podcast. I want to thank AJ for coming on the show again. We've missed you so much, man, and we gotta have you on again. Maybe we'll have you on talking about Twisted Metal. We can do a Twisted Metal special. Uh, oh, you really gonna get me to watch that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, will force I don't want to. Watch. I don't want to let this man suffer. I want to pick something good. Kristen, Nick. you're watching it too. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you made me watch Santa's whatever that was with the uh, the girl from Wizards of Waverly Place. Oh, so this is payback. Selena Gomez. No, no it was Jennifer the- oh. Stone. Oh, and Devin Warkaiser. They were oh. in like this this terrible movie she made me watch. I was like, what the hell? And yeah, no. You guys reviewed it. Yeah, we did a watch along for it for Christmas. I forgot. Oh, what, gotcha. gotcha. What the hell was it called? Oh, I'll figure it out after. But anyway, uh, AJ, let the folks know where they can find you and what you have upcoming um, to your post. What do you, you got? You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Letterbox, Twitch, Serialize, all this stuff under AJ Reacts 2, um, all one word. And coming up on my Instagram, I will be seeing Barbie and Oppenheimer. Um, so those reviews are going to be coming within the next few days. Tomorrow, I'm going to be releasing my review for Insidious the Red Door. Oh, did you like so, it? Um, it was decent. Okay, um, it fine. wasn't horrible, but mm-hmm. um, you'll get my full, you'll get my full thoughts tomorrow um and yeah that's all i have coming up right for right now so thanks again for having me it's always fun being on here it's awesome definitely gonna get you back on but like i said earlier oh one final thought it was called santa girl i just wanted to (laughs) go watch that episode i can sleep tonight now uh (laughs) (laughs) but aj's link will be in the description below and until the next episode, I've been Mac. This has been Chris and this has been AJ. And we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Don't follow us on our socials. Bye. Later. Fuck you in the lane you came with. Me and you ain't on the same shit. You ain't in my lane, bitch. Nah, all that shit in fifth. Broly on my wrist. Ay, baby, you a son. I'm my only wish. I'm counting. Blue honeys. I'm too money. Ay, I'm a little bitch. You too lovely. Yeah, hanging up and calling me right back. Why you calling me like that? Yeah. Yeah. Getting high with the seat, lay back. Baby, gon' relax, yeah. Hey, they don't know the half, yeah. No matter what happened, I got your back. Baby, that's the facts, yeah. That's the facts, yeah.